Hey y'all, Coach Nubai here trying to finish up with chapter 7. Alright, we're looking at the reactions of the theologians and materialists. Alright. Now, we know who the theologians are, but why is he putting them with materialists? We never really heard of anybody called materialists. At least I haven't, you know, until we get to this book. So let's keep reading about who they are. Verse 39 says, well, before we get on, let's go. Uh, Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you will come by here, Lord, and that you will open up our communications pathways, Lord. Let all communications come through, 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 um, um, through your understanding. Uh, help us to, to understand what you would have us to know. Lord, we ask you will reveal some stuff in, in, in these words that, that we need as individuals plus as a people and, and as a family group. Lord, we ask you to do all this through your son's name. Amen. So be it. Amen. So be it. Alright, so we are here in chapter 7. Tell we're not feeling 100%. Alright. We're going to push on. Do not be disturbed when they tell you that he who has spoken to you during this period has been the tempter and that it was foretold that he would also perform miracles. Yeah, that was day one. That, they, they say that anyway. Anybody who speaks truth, they always come and say, you know, the devil is telling you to do it. It's like the only people in the world who are tricked by the devil are the ones who's reading the Bible. It's amazing how they think like that. The ones who are reading the Bible the most are the ones who are the most deceived, according to these people. And I mean, I guess it's the, these material, these people, I'm not sure I'm talking about. But I, but if you if you ever try to talk to anybody about the Word of, of, of God, you, you know what I'm talking about. And the ones who read the Bible the most are the deceived the most. It seems like. He says, uh, and it was foretold that he would perform miracles. Okay? So now remember that this book here teaches us miracles. It teaches us how to perform miracles. So you will have those who are, you know, not so um, um, not so righteous, not so holy, that will be able to do these same type of uh, miracles. And so you know, it's, it's, there's going to be a lot of deception with which he would perturb and confuse the very chosen ones. Now, that's a verse coming from the Bible. But, you know, these people are taking it a little bit further and saying, acting like the chosen ones are the only ones going to be fooled in this thing. I mean, when you talk to me, I mean, serious. It's like, you know, they all get it. And, you know, the chosen ones, you know, we all get it. And the chosen ones, they, they, they the ones that, you know, maybe because they keep reading their Bible. I don't know. Truly, I say to you, that many who think in that way about my manifestations will be those who actually are in the service of evil and in darkness. Look at that. And yeah, I found this to be true. When you look at them close, guys, you know, you start asking them questions like, do you keep the commandments? You know, do you keep the statutes? What about the judgments? You know what I'm saying? Do you believe this? Do you believe that? And you start get painting a picture that this person you're talking to, you know, the same one that's, that says that you are tempted by Satan, are absent the one who is, you know, tempted by Satan. You know, it says it right here, and, and you can prove it. Matter of fact, when next time they come up somebody, they some somebody, you know, start talking that stuff. Check them in. You see, they'll stop. Although their lips try to assure that they are always spreading the truth, they'll get up and they'll yell behind that pulpit all day long, and a whole lot of people are listening to them. But you got to understand what truth is. You know, this truth right here. See how they got lowercase truth. You know, yeah, there's a lot of truths, guys. There's a lot of truths, but there is only one truth. There's only one big C truth. And, you know, that comes out of the scripture. So, when you point to them, you, know, you got to use the scripture. Do not forget that, do not forget that the tree is known by its fruits. Okay. Remember he said that? You know, he said, uh, what? A uh, good tree has good fruit. The corrupt tree has corrupt fruit I say to you the fruit is this word which has come to vibrate through the faculties of those spokesmen okay so now we're talking about how this book was made you know these in, individuals it, it, 
the Lord spoke through the individuals. He uses, you know, these spiritual vibrations that he speak of to th speak through the faculties of his spokesman. Men and women of simple heart, by the fruits of spiritual progress of those who have tasted it, mankind will recognize that I am the tree. Okay? So, he's he's the one from which it, it comes. Now, we don't really recognize that now, do we? Not, not as a main kind, we don't. So we'll come to recognize him as the tree. And notice tree is capitalized there. But we say we won't pay any, any attention to his capitalization. We've seen him get it wrong. But, you know, we'll, we'll assume, well, we'll take it case by case. Because, you know, like I said, I, I know how this, how they got it done like this. And I know it was done in innocence. So there will be, they, they'll get the majority of them right. And there will be only a few innocuous cases that will be wrong. So, We'll pay a little bit of attention to the to the um, to the capitalization, but this is what I'm saying. Here. Forty-one, the spiritual Trinitarian Marian doctrine will spread. Okay, now this one, this 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 is a huge thing right here because I mean he's giving it a title: Trinitarian Marian doctrine. Tr Trinitarian Marian doctrine. Spiritual Trinitarian Marian doctrine. Okay, it's like a label. It says it will spread, causing a real alarm among many who believe in they studied and understood the lessons which they had previously received from the Father. Okay, so let's see what it says. This doctrine will spread, causing a real alarm among many believing they studied and understood the lessons of the previous yeah they they thought they understood the old testament i thought i understood the old testament ain't no way in the world you better tell me i understand the old testament i want stacy that is some, some pretty itchy snot ain't itchy but it's not it. yeah, itchy start sneezing anyway Test her, test her knowledge. The spiritual Trinitarian Marian doctrine. Okay, this is going to cause an alarm. I still like that word. I like the way it sounds when that other guy reads it. Uh, uh, I don't know what, I forgot what his name was. I read it. Let's go on. Have become conceited with the knowledge of their philosophies their sciences are aware of the spiritual evolution that mankind has reached. Yeah. Remember, we started off talking about the theologians and the materialists. He also talked, you know, the man of science is included in here. And it's through that they're conceited. They're, through that conceit, they're conceited in their knowledge is for science. They think they know everything. Especially them guys that are in the college and got a piece of paper to snap you with. They take their diploma and, 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 and I'm serious. They, that's a serious thing. And so in that doc in that document they can't see anything past it. So when when this document here is introduced to them, you know, it's their diploma that's gonna blind blind their eyes. And the philosophies, you know, unaware of the spiritual evolution that mankind has reached. They don't even know we've been in a spiritual evolution, you know. Who who understood Jacob's ladder? A few people did, you know. I can remember, you know, hearing some stuff about it, you know, now, but you know, even when after listening to them, I wasn't, I didn't know what it was. On awakening from their lethargy, they will become aware of the manner in which the spirit of man thinks and feels today. I guess I'm going to define, you know, how, how, how we think and, and feel today. Lethargy is weariness. Um, Lassitude, stupor, tiredness, exhaustion, fatigue, laziness, and sluggishness. So, so awakening from our stupor, they will become aware of the manner in which the spirit of men thinks and feels today. They will hurl anathemas against what they call new ideas and they will declare that this movement is being provoked by the Antichrist. So he's telling you how the how the battle is going to be fought. He's telling you what's going to happen ahead of time. The same way when you read in Matthew 
Um, the, I can't remember what chapter exactly it is, but he tells you that you're going to be persecuted, and he tells you to uh, count it all joy. Well, he's telling you now that these guys right here, they, they're going to, and you already counted all. He ain't got to tell you that again, but he's just telling you again. You know, they are going to say that he's coming from the Antichrist, so you might as well get ready for it. You know, don't be those. You know, don't be like those who you know fall for that garbage just because they have a, you know a title or you know some shiny things or whatever. Then, oh, I know what it is. I bet it's this. I bet it's this. Uh, this uh, vinegar I'm drinking, messing with them sinuses up that has been locked up. Yeah, I, I suffer from sinuses, guys, and I found a long time ago that I cure an apple cider vinegar, but I, somebody borrowed mine. Praise the Lord, I haven't had any in a while. I mean, a good while. And now, somebody, you know, brought some home. Praise the Lord, and I got me a shot. And it's, it got me a little snotty. I don't think I was snotty when I started this. I don't know. We can go back in here, but it's draining now. That's for sure. So, pray for me. I don't know you doing good praying for yourself. You're right, I am, because of this book here. It teaches you how to pray. Then they will go back to the scriptures. Okay, so after they call you the Antichrist, then they're going to go back to the scriptures. Okay, so that's the first thing that will come out of their mouth. It was funny, but it's true. First thing that will come out of their mouth is, you know, is disbelief. They're not going to believe it. They're, they're going to want to say, hey, this ain't true. Why? Because they, they think they know everything. You know what I'm saying? How did, how, how did the teacher going to become the teach? How, how is the hunter going to become the hunted? You know, they don't want to they don't want to, they don't want to switch roles. All right, Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug, you know what I'm saying? Let me borrow your, your robe here for, you know, man, you going to sit down over there while I give this sermon, bring you up to speed. To the prophecies and to my word, which I had, which I gave you during the second era. So we're talking about um, um, all of the Old Testament and New. Well, remember, we received both the Old Testament and the New Testament in the second era. A lot of people this hasn't dawned on to, but the Bible hasn't been available to mankind until the 1600s. Only very, very, very few people. And I can probably count them on my fingers the amount of people who had a who had anything close to a complete set of biblical documents, other than somebody like a priest, you know, or you know, somebody at the Vatican, or you know, some other, you know. Them, the, the ones who wrote it, the scribes, everybody else, you know, would would have been, you know, blessed just to hear some words out of it up until the year 1611 A.D. 1611 A.D. is when it was, you know, made available to mankind for the first time. They started putting it on printing presses, maybe 1500s, but it's still, they started printing it out for a lot of people where you could actually get copies of it. You know, before then, they had to write it out with, by hand. Each time you wanted a copy of the book, like if you came to my house, and say, oh, coach in the fight, I want a copy of your book. Well, what we do, I sit you down here at this table because I don't know who else is going to do it. You're going to sit there and you're going to write word for word each, each letter out of that book. And by the time you finish, you're going to have a copy of it, a hardcore copy of it. You know what? I wish I could do that to this book. But, you know, it's like, I like it. So, <clears throat> um, but in 1611, it, started, it became available. So, you can, so think about what change that had on the world. Okay, let's go on. Um, it says during the second era. So you got both during the second era. The reason I said it because you didn't get one in the first era, one in the second era. You got both in the second era. To try to combat my new manifestation. So they're going to use this to try to, to, to fight off the spiritualist movement. The, the spreading of the spiritualist doctrine. They're going to use the Old Testament and the New Testament to fight against it. They're going to use the word to fight against the word. Yeah, how funny is that? My new lessons and all that I promised and which today I am fulfilling. Okay. Um, yeah, he's promising. Yeah, he's doing it. 44. Through the lips of my disciples and by means of writings. Okay, so now um, remember he's coming in different ways so he's, he's telling you he's going to do both my word will reach even those who admit nothing beyond what is material okay so <clears throat> there's a lot of people who don't believe anything spiritual you know they don't want to hear and the reason why it's not completely their fault 
you know, we've always been spooked by it. I know I have. You know, I'm just now getting used to the fact that there is such a thing in spiritualism. You go back to my older classes, even even in this series, and I'm, you know, I'm old coaching and fighters kind of, you know, really getting used to the idea that there is something other than material and what I can see, you know. And so there's a lot of people who's never going to get it. Or from their knowledge and concepts, which they have already accepted, okay? And they will call me a false god for bringing you this word. So they're going to they gonna, they gonna talk real bad. That's why, that's why I coach in a fight. I tone down a, little, a lot. You know, I still talk a lot, obviously. But, you know what I'm saying? I used to talk at people. I used to, you know, with, with go and, you know, um, attack people with this sword. And now I try to attack lies and I leave the people alone. Kind of, I try to put a wedge between them and the lie and let, you know, kind of separate them, you know, saving the people and, you know, squashing the lie. Whereas you said it used to, I used to kind of feel like the lie and the people were attacked. And I went after the boat, you know what I mean? And, you know, so you, you treat them differently now because you, you read this document and see what's going to happen. You know, you, this is friendly fire. That was actually friendly fire that I was guilty of. Okay, so they're going to accept it and they will call, but they're going to call him a false guy bringing his work. But when you hear this, okay, now when you hear you, when you hear them calling God a false God, and they, when you hear them calling you the uh, disciple of the Antichrist, what are you supposed to do? Even if your hearts feel hurt, okay, so in it, so, okay, so I'm just going to hurt them a little bit. Your faith will not suffer any discouragement, okay, so you don't let your, your faith suffer. He said it's not. It shouldn't. I mean, you made it this far. I mean, it, it ain't nothing new. It ain't like, you know, they, this is the first time they called us the Antichrist or, you know, <laughs> golly, they've been doing every every time somebody talked, whipped out Leviticus 23, you know what I'm saying? They, they start talking and stuff. Every time somebody whipped out, you know, any, any part of, of the old, to any part of the Bible that they were in disagreement with, you could have pulled out Enoch or Joshua, Jubilees, anything. You know what I'm saying? If they didn't like it, they said, oh, this is false. This is, you know, this is something else. And it's like, uh, hey, dude, all that you know is not all that there is to know. Wow, this stuff is working good. Mm, I like it. But when you hear this, even if your heart feels hurt, your faith will not suffer any discouragement. Recalling with emotion that your master already had announced it to you and strengthened you with his word to restrict those tests. Okay, now what does it mean right there? Oh, calling, recalling with emotion. That, okay, so the so the master had emotion. <coughs> okay, the uh, snatch just turned itchy. Recalling with emotion that your master already had announced it to you and strengthened you with his word to resist those tests. Okay, now this is the first time you tune in to coaching the fight. We don't do a lot of editing for the sake of getting stuff up. I mean, I could spend the next week uh, trying to make this the most perfect document you've ever seen in your life. I promise you. I promise you. I can make a snag, you know, or I can go on to chapter 8. <clears throat> anyway. 46. On the other hand, I say that even if along your way you find falsity, hypocrisy, superstition, religious, fanaticism, and idolatry, do not judge anyone. Okay, now we're going to find that. But wait, he's saying don't judge anyone. So he's saying even when we come in contact with our brothers, do, and what do we do? Do not judge them because of their errors. Instruct them with my word and leave their cause to me. Now, this is telling you how to fight. This is telling you how to fight right here. This is We are in biblical kung fu here. It's time. We ain't boxing no more. No, this is MMA. It, this is MMA right now. You know what I mean? It's mixed martial arts. You know I'm we mixing up some stuff, and so he's telling you how to fight. You use the word, and you say, "Well, um, we've always done that." Yeah, well, we really got to do a better job of it now. Oh, coaching the fight, I know I'm guilty. You know, when when I read the scripture, you know, to my era, I say I read it fast. You know, I picked up Genesis and I read one chapter at a time. You know, and I, meaning I would not stop. You know, until I got to the end of the chapter. But sometimes I would read like, you know, for 45 minutes to an hour without a break. You can't, you don't comprehend a lot when you're doing that. You don't comprehend much at all. But check this out. Just like everybody else, you have the spirit inside you that will bring this information back to you when you need it. 
So you put those two things together, you have like a database of all of this information just dumped in this thing. And then you got like this super processor over here, it's called the Holy Spirit, that can that, that, that goes over here and grabs bits and pieces of it. So what does that mean? He don't come with verses. He don't he don't say Joel chapter six verse thirteen. You know what I'm saying? All you know is just in there. You know, and that builds on a lot of anxiety sometimes because you can't prove what you know. And then, you know, and then, you know, it kind of brings some frustration. What you got there, Chris? Ride Moranga Lee. Ride Moranga Lee. What, what? Bring that over here. Let me see. What, what's that? What's Ride Moranga Lee good for, Chris? Well, Moranga is a superfood. Super food. Uh oh, we got to do a show on moringa. All right, you gonna crush it up and wet it in this, or this is about all I gonna get? My well, moringa. I ain't never heard of a moringa until we was trying to find some type of tea. I think that's where we started from when we were, when we were trying to find some other tea other than Walmart tea, <laughs> the tea you bought in the store. And so we ended up buying moringa seeds. And now we grow moringa. Chris is drying it. Mm. What you gonna do with it? Oh, he's making it for me, y'all. He knows how to get some merits. Let me see if I can get some more. As soon as I can find out where I'm at, I've been stalling trying to figure out where I'm at. I'm going to start right here. Calls to me, my word, and leave their calls to me. So you don't you don't go in and hit them with the Bible no more. You don't hit, you, you say, hey, um, this is, this is what I understand. This is what the scripture says. No, you don't tell them what you understand. You say, this is what the scripture says. And then, you know, you leave the calls to them. Oh, them, them things are fine, Chris. For I am the only one who judges you and who knows who is the false God. All right? So he's the only one. And you have to be careful because, you know, Ocos and them, I have my pet peeves. Idolatry is one of my pet peeves. You notice how I show, you know, we, I try really hard not to show you the images. And so I, when I get on there and I'm hearing, you know, ministers on YouTube, you know, I still look at, you know, I, I listen more now to other ministers on YouTube than I ever did in my life. I've never really ever done it. But I'm, I'm listening to them now because, you know, I'm trying to find out who the friends and the foes are. Well, and I'm targeting lies and stuff like that. And so I'll listen to a show, but I can't just automatically say this person is a foe because they're breaking the second commandment. I have to get past that point, you know, and understand that there's, there's still some errors there. And, you know, and so only God knows who they really are. I can't just blow them up because they, they you know, like I said, they, they're in error. The Lord knows who they are. So, you know, you move on. The false Christ, the unrighteous apostle, and the hypocritical Pharisee. Now, see, these are, these are three that we're, wait, that we're waiting for. Now, the false Christ, I guess that's in substitute of the real Christ. The unrighteous apostle, that will be the the um, the one four four, right? I guess. And the unrighteous that would be the unrighteous one four four. And then the hypocritical Pharisee. Now you have to remember what a Pharisee was. I do not I don't I don't know the difference between a Pharisee and a Sadducee. I used to. Chris? No, he's gonna get his book, y'all. He worked right on that meringue and see, so all right, 47. The war of ideas, creeds, religions, doctrines, philosophies, theories, and science shall come. Now, this is a title of this war. World War, I don't know, World War of Spiritualism. The Spiritualism War. And what is it? It is the war of ideas. Okay, ideas meaning, um, are we supposed to eat that? Creeds, then, you know, these documents that we've had over all of our lives. Religions got several of them. Doctrines is teachings. So inside of each religion, there's different teachings, philosophies. You know, um, a little bit above coach's head. Yeah, I'm a math dude. I don't know much about philosophy. Theories. You know, we study theories. So you got science. You know, I, I knew science was coming. He started talking about theories. It comes to sciences. All of this. This is a war. He's calling it. And my name and doctrine shall be in every mouth. So imagine this, guys. That, that's kind of what, what Coach O in the fight is doing here. You know what I'm saying? The pig in the poke game. I am still running down the field. And I could jump over there and see if anybody's giving any classes up on YouTube. Maybe they're on somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I own YouTube. Do I? Why am I the only one giving classes on YouTube right now? On, on the Third Testament. The closest thing is the little lady there who, you know, was it was letting everybody know that it even exists. You know, other than that, you got to go two years 
two years ago when some dude told you that it exists before and, and even before that ain't nothing it's like uh, well the book itself you know it's like the book came out in 2010 and then two years later somebody told you that it, was, that it would exist and then two years later you know what I'm saying nothing and then two years after that nothing and then two years after that I started teaching it and then you know <clears throat> you know it's, it's, so what are we doing we're getting ahead of the game by the time everybody already realized what's going on We've already acquired the weapons. We already know like, we got the game plan, both theirs and ours, and we're sitting back waiting for their next move. You know, and you know, I don't know. It, seemed, it almost seems like an unfair fight, but you know, you gotta remember, you know, how much of, the, of this battle has taken place already, and you know what? It's time for us to start winning. You know what I'm saying? It's time for us, you know, to become the head, just like it says. You know, we've been the tail. It's time to become the head. My new coming will be argued and judged, and from that shall arise great believers proclaiming that Christ has been again among man. Okay? Now, so this is what's going on here. Let me tell you already. Don't don't play crazy. I'm gonna tell you, he's already back. The, the second coming, the Lord is back. We, the people waiting for the second coming of Christ, you need to quit waiting. He's already here. In the form of this document that you know that's here, and, and and I'm sure there's other translations of it. I ain't saying that this particular translation is the one, you know, you know. It's but you know the this is it's in other language. I know it's in Spanish, and that too is the word. That too is the second coming. I'm sure it's going to hear every language. This it, it's really what he said when 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 remember the scripture says that you know the doctrine has to be spread throughout all of the world. Scratch that. It wasn't talking about the first. Testament or the Second Testament. That's why people are like, well, words. Yeah, we just spread this in every each and every language. No, he's talking about this document. This document here. This one here is going to spread, and it don't have to go, you know, by paper either. Remember, he says he spreads it spiritually too, so it's going to spread. But it will, and once it once it has spread, and everybody knows about it, I guess, then the party start. It shall arrive believers proclaiming that <clears throat> great believers proclaiming that Christ has been again among men at those moments from the infinite I shall encourage those hearts and perform prodigies where they pass to strengthen their faith okay now now I guess he's talking about these great believers because it seems like now he's talking about something he's, he's going to perform prodigies, which we know prodigies to be like a miracle or something like that. So he says he's going to put these miracles in the past of these individuals. Let's see. Prodigies is genu genius, uh, genie, I don't know what that is. Sensations, phenomena, wonders, stars, wonder kinds, wonder, wonder kinds. Wow. That's a word. Boy wonder. Mm. Okay. So some boy wonder. But if these dudes gonna be boy wondering around here, where they pass to strengthen their faith. Okay. So remember, he said he he entreats us with signs and you know that kind of thing. And so some these miracles, that's what they are. They they're signs. All right. All right, guys. Looks like we're here. Wake everybody up. We're at the end of this section. Um, the next section will be the effect of spiritualism. We're here in chapter 7. We're going to be looking at the effect of spiritualism next. All right, looks like Chris about chopped everything up there and whipped out some old fancy containers. Why are you putting it in that container, Chris? You got all of these? Seems like you have a big container like one of these so you can just keep filling it up. Get your leaves, dry them out, put them in there. Every every so often you put some more in there and then at the end of the end of the uh, season you, you, you got so many that you got stacked up in there. How many did you collect? Put a big sign on the same right there. Praise the Lord, remember and, and share it with the widows, the orphans and you know. And of course the Levi Peace be with you. Hermes Academy. Power, patience, continence, and faith. We teach virtue.